Welcome back. Now, a number of Nigerian government eurobonds and diaspora bonds issued this year have been listed on the FMDQ OTC Securities Exchange. The International Capital Market Securities presents major milestones in Nigeria's financial history. This was indicated in the address of Stambik IBTC Holdings Chief Executive, Mr. Yinka Sani. To enable the country meet its objectives, including funding the budget deficit, building the country's profile in the international capital markets, raising funds to be applied towards developing key infrastructure, supporting the drive towards economic diversification from oil revenue, and improving foreign reserves, Nigeria embarked on an ambitious capital raising plan amidst some uncertainty as to the reception of international investors to Nigerian risk. Over the course of the year, Nigeria issued 1.5 billion euro bonds due 2032 on 9th February and 29th March, which was six times oversubscribed. Uh, secondly, Nigeria issued 300 million US dollars SEC registered diaspora bond due 2022 on 19th June, which was nearly two and a half times, two times oversubscribed. And thirdly, Nigeria also issued 3 billion euro bonds in dual issuance on 11th of November, which was over three times oversubscribed. These transactions received overwhelming reception from investors and led to the federal government achieving a number of key milestones. First, the diaspora bond uh, was first in a few instances. One is that Nigeria this was Nigeria's first ever SEC registered debt instrument, registered by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. Um, secondly, the diaspora bond uh, was Nigeria's first ever diaspora bond offering. Uh, the DG already said that. And thirdly, uh, it was first. It was the first sub-Saharan Africa, ex-South Africa offering in a SEC registered environment. Uh, for the euro bond. Also first in a few instances, in a number of instances, uh, it was the first U.S. offering by Nigeria since July 2013. It was the first benchmark euro bond offering by a sub-Saharan African issuer in 2017. It was the largest ever single offering from a sub-Saharan African issuer. It was the largest ever order book for a sub-Saharan African issuer. And it was the longest tenor bond for a sub-Saharan African issuer. At this point, I think I have to, yes, if you are happy, I can wait. Thank you. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are happy to once again be involved with the listing of Nigeria's international capital market securities on the FMDQ platform. Thank you for giving us this platform, Coco and team. Of course, Christmas came a few days early for U.S. President Donald Trump with the passing of the tax bill on Wednesday. And let's get more details on what it means for Americans and the equity markets. I'm being joined by my colleague in New York, Jill Maladrino. Hello, Jill. I think the tax bill seems to be a Christmas present for Donald Trump, right? This certainly was. It was the biggest legislative achievement of Trump's administration in 2017 with the most sweeping overhaul of the U.S. tax system in more than 30 years. An estimated $200 billion in tax relief will enter the U.S. economy in 2018, and that would be the largest cut since uh, the 1981 Reagan tax cut. Now, do you think the tax cuts were priced into the market? And, uh, of course, what does it mean for stocks? Well, some investors expected the passage of the bill to be a sell the news kind of event, yet the market is trading at or near all time high. So while the tax bill was a convenient excuse to justify the run up in stocks, I would argue that an improved economy and strong corporate earnings are truly the fundamentals behind the run in U.S. equities this year. Companies are flush with cash, and I think that will lead to increased buybacks and dividends. Uh, m a activity and investment in r d because there's finally some clarity around how taxes will impact the balance sheet and clearly the 
this bill is a huge bonus for corporate America. The reduction in corporate taxes goes to 21% from 35%, and that will be impactful to S&P 500 profitability. And that also means consensus estimates are likely to increase in the coming weeks to analyst, uh, as analysts reassess their forecasts. Banks should benefit from the possibility of higher market interest rates, lower tax uh, rates, and reduced regulation which could help boost lending. Small caps could also benefit in the coming year from a lower tax rates and a stronger dollar. In other words, Americans are hopeful for a better 2018. By the way, Jill, it's, uh, it's been a beautiful year working with you and your team in New York, and I guess you are ready to sign up for the year. From all of us here on the business desk, wish you a Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. See you in 2018. Thank you. Right. Enjoy the rest of the day. And menaced by Al-Shabaab militants and a worsening drought, thousands of Somalis have abandoned their land to seek shelter in neighboring Ethiopia. About 4,300 refugees have arrived in the country's southeast this year alone, deepening the crisis. Aid agencies are now appealing for additional funding from donors to help meet the needs of refugees. Thousands of Somali refugees escaping insecurity and home continue to arrive at Ethiopia's southeast and Dolowado region, traveling for about six days on foot or donkey cart in some cases. <laughs> Most complain of harassment and forced recruitment by Islamist militants who are taxing them and seizing their food, animals and land. Al-Shabaab, which has been fighting Somalia's western backs government for a decade, partially controls Bay and Bakul regions where many of the new arrivals come from. Dolowado has five refugee camps hosting a total number of 215,554 refugees at the moment. It was established in 2010 when a severe drought coupled with violent conflict hit Somalia. All of my animals died because of drought. On top of that, Al-Shabaab militants would come and ask for tax. I didn't have money to pay, so I feared for my life and had to flee my home. The World Food Programme says the number of arrivals has surged and they are recording the highest inflow of refugees in the last three years. Clinics have been set up nearby to check and treat children for malnutrition. In the first three weeks of January, 77% of children arriving in Ethiopia had global acute malnutrition, five times higher than the World Health Organization's emergency threshold of 15%. So far, the rates of the camps are between 11 and 12%. <laughs> A lack of access to food aid was one of the main reasons 260,000 people died in Somalia's 2011 farming, also caused by drought and conflict. The UN hopes it will have better access than in 2011, as African Union forces have pushed Al-Shabaab out of the Somali capital Mogadishu and other southern strongholds. Agencies are appealing to donors for more funding. WFP urgently requires 27 million in order to keep and maintain the ration levels and not sustain any further cuts in March of 2018. So 27 million will bring us up through the end of April. And so if we don't get that, then we're unfortunately going to be able to further reduce rations and it's going to have a very, very negative effect on people that already have so little. Dolo Ado, 70 kilometers from the Somali border, hosts the second largest Somali refugee population in the region after Kenya. And that's a wrap on the program today and of course for the week. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Chimizie Obi Iwago. Merry Christmas.